Hello, hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Ivan, Cindy, Diana, Guille. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing? I am doing very, very good. Hey, I got some news for you guys. Um, the course ending, course ending date has been confirmed for February 18th. So, así como teníamos dicho, four weeks. Let me go back over here. We are going to complete, yeah, we're completing week number two, and then we're starting week number three on the eighth. From the eighth to the 11th, it's week number three. And then week number four starts on the 15th through the 18th. That is one. They also told me for you guys to start preparing your documents for the next module. So documents for next module. And I will send you guys that information. Since I received it today, I'm going to receive it. I'm, I'm going to send it to you guys on WhatsApp. So that you guys can get that. And it's like a little screenshot with information. Hopefully, you guys are able to, to use it. Um, there were some requirements before the con before the documents before you guys can send the documents they said that you guys have to have 80% completion on the platform 80% completion on the platform and then the 80% also gets you the certification so right it's, it's like a win win you get the certification and then you are also able to start sending the comments for the next module. Let me go ahead and go here and let's start sharing. I think that's about it. Have they sent you guys any information on WhatsApp, like a private message just for you guys? Yes. Uh, today uh, I received uh, a message about the about uh, the the next uh, the next court that we need to uh, to send the information or or the document documents that they require. Okay, okay, yeah. So that's that's what they that's what they sent me as well. All right, so yes. I'm happy to hear that you guys also received them. There but uh, I think that I didn't receive uh, the the form to come to fill. To, they okay. didn't send the form to complete it. So I I don't know if you are going to send that or or they are going to send that the, the, the form so we can complete. Completed. You know, I understood it that way. They gave, uh, they put specific dates, and what they're going to do is they're going to send the forms on a specific date. Let me, let me check the WhatsApp message that they brought, um, because I remember seeing something like that. So I'll review it, and then I'll send you guys the information as well, just to make sure that we have it. So ojo con eso, ojo con eso. Porque ya se, ya se nos llegó, ¿eh? I know we're still early. Uh, yes, I can see the link that they sent. With the me, form. With the form. Okay. But I'm not able to click on the, the link. Let me see. No.
Uh, let me see if I can click on the link. No, I, I no, I cannot. I'm not able to click on the link. Just I can see the the address, but I'm I'm not able to click. Okay. Click on it. I'll double check on that and see and see what's going on. Yeah, that's that's something that's that sounds very familiar to to what I read. Okay, all right, we're all set. So, um, welcome everybody, Paco. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Karen. Hi, Glenda. Diana, Cindy, creo que ya había mencionado a Iván Guille. Bienvenido. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday. Good evening. Do you guys remember what we call Wednesday? It is. What do we call it? Good evening, Mr. Teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Glenda. It is the hump day, right? Wednesday. February three. The middle of the week. Well, for us, it's for us is our Thursday. Tomorrow is our last day of week two. So today is day number three. Week number two. And that's how we're at. We have gotten to section number two actually let me go ahead let me go ahead and jump right into it how are you guys doing with the platform have you guys started section one are you in the middle of section two where are you talk to me how many of you guys how many of you guys have completed section one? I already yes. completed the section two. Okay, yeah. nice. Okay. All right. All right. Remember, 80%. We still have, we you know we got some really good news because the module is going to end on February 18th. So confirmado, confirmado, Glenda. We yes. finish on February 18th. February 18th. That means that we have the rest of this week, Friday, Saturday, yes. Sunday, verdad? Yes. And then all of next week from the eight, well, from the eight to Valentine's Day. Yes. To kind of go and catch up. Please take advantage of the time. Also, if you're planning on enrolling for the next module, please start to prepare your documents. Start the documentation. Um, I, I believe you have to resend everything. Yes. So, ojo con eso, ojo con eso. No le vayan a hacer como todo buen salvadoreño, ¿verdad? Que esperamos hasta el último momento, último momento. Hey, teacher, uh, what, what is the last day that we have to 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 send the document i believe ivan was reading it and fecha limited inscription 10 de febrero so you have until the 10th of february for you to send now now i want you to know that the reason they ask for it is because they know que como todo buen salvadoreño hay personas que que se esperan incluso hasta pasado la fecha límite and as you guys can see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to start the next module on February 22nd. So they have to have all the documentation ready. They prepare it throughout the week. And then on the week of the 22nd, we should be getting started with the next module. So that's why they're asking for it. Y han puesto la fecha límite de inscripción para el 10 de febrero. Muchísimas gracias por esa información, Ivan. 
So aquí mi calendario, ¿verdad? Con todos los dates gringos importantes, claro. Is it, sí. Y, if I cannot continue with the module, uh, I don't have to send anything, right? You don't have to send anything. Um, you are actually totally okay. Now, what I would recommend that you do complete is um, the, the platform work. Uh, let me tell you why. Um, el curso que se les está dando, estás, eh, bueno, eh, it's being, you can say that it's being funded by INSAFORP eh, as a whole. And so what happens is that INSAFORP has uh, your information and that's why you guys send the, docu the documentation because we are working closely together with INSAFORP. And so any, um, I, I want to say it, uh, INSAFORP I think works, is not only for English. They have a lot of courses that they provide. Eh, por ejemplo, yo he estado tomando cursos de INSAFORP por los últimos, yo diría que unos cinco, seis años. Uh, if not even further than that, they have all been given or been provided through my, uh, through my work. And the majority of time, actually 100% of the times that I've taken the courses, they have been free for me. But they say that the, las empresas sí lo pagan. So with that in mind, what they ask you to do is to complete the module so that you get certified and that way, in INSAFORP, sale como que usted ha terminado el curso y está completado. And that means that in any other course that you decide to take that has been funded by INSAFORP, you should be able to take it. Pero si usted no termina la plataforma y usted no recibe el, la certificación, puede hacer de que queden los datos como que no completó el módulo y puede hacer que no pueda volver a tomar algún curso con Insaforpa en el futuro. Así es que, eh, si usted ya no va a seguir, that's okay, right? With, with the classes, don't worry about it. But with the platform, I just want you to think about your future, ¿verdad? Si alguna vez va a volver a retomar algún curso de Insaforp, les recomiendo que por lo menos completen el trabajo de la plataforma y llegar al 80% para que les quede como que si terminaron la, la, los cursos y fueron certificados. ¿Estamos? Ok, okay. okay thank you. Yes. I'm going to yes. finish this, this model. model. Uh, my problem is uh, it's for the next module. Entonces... Right, right. Ok, no, 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 no problem. Don't worry about it. Just remember, remember. Um, just make sure that the, the platform gets completed and that you are able to get certified. And then you should be ok. Okay, thank you. All right. And then you can you can leave and you can come back. Um, I believe that that, also, that is also an option, right? At, at a later time, at a, in a future date. Okay. All right. All right, everybody, welcome to the platform. We're going back to the platform. Remember, we were gonna do all of these weeks in the platform. Now that we know for sure that we have uh, two more weeks to go, um, my plans continue the same for this week. Finish as much from the platform as we can, so that when we jump into the uh, into the um, into the PowerPoint presentations and the worksheets, you guys are already, you know, kind of used to working the platform and getting the, you know, the the, the sections completed and the modules completed. All right, how many of you guys were able to finish 2.10, which was the child prodigies? We, we finished this one together, right? Mm. Or we started to work on it? You guys remember that? Mm. Did we get this far? All right, so yeah, okay. How many of you guys were able to finish this one? And how many of you guys were able to, do you guys think you guys can remember if we answer now? All right. No, uh, I think that we only, we only did the, the first question. Okay, which I believe was the most wonderful, perfect violinist, correct? 
Yes, and then we, we missed all of them. All right, okay. All right, so let's work on two, three, four, five based on the based on the story. So the second portion or question number two, who gave Sarah her first violin? Her mother, her father. Remember that it was her father. Her father? Father. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put her father on here. Where did Sarah go to school? You guys remember that? Ay, disculpen. Hey, the stars. Se cambió. Hold on, guys. No, not there. There it is. All right. Where did Sarah go to school? Gilliard School of Music or the Gilliard yeah. School of Arts? School of Music? Okay. Yeah, School of Music. What did doctors tell Michael's parents? He might have learning difficulties. Learning difficulties, okay. He might have learning difficulties. And then the last one here, whose work has Alexandra's been compared to? Picasso. Picasso. All right, let me see. We're going to click submit. Get it. And there it is. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Well done, everybody. Well done. Well done. And that means that we can move to section number three. <clears throat> Lesson 3.0. We continue with the conversation. Today, what we're going to see is participles and adjectives being used in context. And so let's go ahead and click next and let's start our video. Can you guys see the video okay? Yes. Yeah, all right, let me go ahead and put it on. Here we go. Sorry guys. You're back with us. So can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Nice to have you back with us. So can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? 
That's fine with me. Y al final, ¿en qué quedaron? Details. En nada. <laughs> That's right. Nothing. At the end, all that work, all that big old conversation, all that fuzz. Para que al final, nada. All right. So this is the conversation. Now, there are some things here that are what you might call proper, right? Because we are used to saying, for example, um, you know, the James Bond movie. And in this particular case, they said the James Bond film. Because it's in the movie theaters, right? Or in the theater, It just depends on how you want to say it. But the correct way would be James Bond film as it is a film. And the reason that they're saying a movie tonight yeah. is because they're planning on going to the movie theater. All right. So it's okay either way. Do you want to see a movie tonight? You know, maybe. What's playing? How about that new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? Oh, I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I, want, I would want to see, or I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Ah, nosotros siempre, el Roger, ahí todo un caballero. Siempre, claro, claro, lo que tú quieras ver. Okay. Who would like to practice being Roger and Carol? Volunteers for reading role play exercise. Hello, Carla. Hello, welcome. Nesty, welcome. Mario. Thanks, teacher. All right, all right. Ivan, I see your hand is up. Ivan, uh, Paco, do you want to help? Yeah. All right, let's... All you have to do, all you have to do, Paco, is read the portion that says Roger, and then Ivan is going to play uh, Carol. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Paco, Ivan, let's... Three, two, one. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fas fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Hailberry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. You are muted, teacher. Ay, caí en la trampa. Ay, gran, gran explicación que yo iba de hablar y hablar. Y pues ya, ya, ya se, me, se me fue la inspiración. No, nada, no, no, vamos. Um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was the names here. The first one being... And let me see, let me open it up so we can type it in. Let's use a blank one. There it is. Okay. So, 
two names and two ways of pronunciation. Bring it up here. First one, uh, let me make it a little bit larger. I think we can, there it is, okay. So we have the first one and we have second name. Now, some people, they pronounce them the same way, the same exact way. Uh, they both sound like what you're saying is Steven. Now, if you guys see the bottom, that's actually the way that it would sound as Steven, you know? However, there are people that call this name Steven. And so what they will do is they will usually say, my name is Steven with a PH, okay? Or if their name is Steven, they will say with a V. And so both are correct now. The new generations of Steven, they don't like it when you call them Steven if they have the PH. So if you are talking to somebody who is younger, they will say that their name is Stefan. I have met two already. They will say that their name is Stefan. And then so, you know, we I'm, I'm a little bit older. And so what I try to do is I say, well, that's great. But did you know that your name is, you know, most of the people pronounce it as Stephen, and they say yes, and it's wrong and they try to correct you. So now both ways are okay. You can be called or you can call yourself Stefan or you can call yourself Stephen. Both pronunciations come out in dictionaries. So you could say that there are actually three ways, if that's the case, right, of pronouncing the name Stephen. Mm -hmm. So you can have people that call themselves Stephen. You have people that call themselves Stevens with a PH or Stephen with a V. And they will tell you, they will let you know. The older the Stephen, the better it is because they have been living, you know, with, with having to say PH all, all their life. And so they will tell they will tell you from the very beginning, hi, my name is Stephen with a PH, they'll say. Entonces ya no les tenés que preguntar tú. They will automatically give you that. All right. Okay. Next, next item on the list was Halle, Halle Berry. Now, the name also comes with a little bit of, um, I want to say with a little bit of, of fights because some people say hell, some people say Halle, some people say how, you know, they really pronounce the age. Some people don't pronounce the age, but the way that they are saying it on the recording is actually the correct way that I've heard. Halle Berry, like if there is an, like, a, like if there's a Y at the end, Halle Berry. And so that will also work. Let me see here. Um, besides that, everything else went good. I heard you guys say the word fascinating, which is a pretty long word, hard to say. Uh, you guys also mentioned interested, which was also pronounced, and you guys read it. You did a good job reading those two. So good for you. All right. So now you know about the names. Had you guys, I think Ivan mentioned... There was a cousin that, so so your cousin's name was Stephen or Stefan? Oh, oh. And he pronounced it Stefan like that? Stephen, all right, okay. Yeah, so he's, yeah, so 
he's probably the old school bunch. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Stefan, Steven, yeah, so those those are good. Remember, either way is good. It's just a matter of how you want to pronounce it. Do you guys remember any weird names that you guys have heard lately and the pronunciation in the news? I saw one. I don't know if you guys remember this one. That was the name. Do you guys remember seeing that on Facebook or Twitter or the news? No. No? <laughs> and so the mom got really upset because they were at the airport and the guy that was saying the name kept saying A, B, C, D, and then the last name. And the mother had a heart attack. I mean, she went on a rant. She went absolutely ballistic. Uh, she even sued the airline. Now, when they asked her what was the name or how you were supposed to uh, say the name, she said that it was supposed to be Absidy. Absidy. And, you know, everybody was like, what do you mean Absidy? You know, it's, it's A, B, C, D. But, but she said no. And Absidy was the name that she kept using. And everybody, you know, at the end kind of agreed with it. What do you guys think about that name? I, I, you know, I'm okay with names, I guess. You can, they can be all unique app city app city where in, in the united states well here we had some weird names for a while i think in el salvador i, I think it wasn't until they passed a law right there's a law now where if you want to name your kids something you know unique it, it's really really hard so all right Moving on, moving on. Enough with the names. Teacher. Hey. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. I have a question. Uh, when can we use um, see or watch when there's a movie? Oh, okay. So now you can what? say something like you can say let me erase these here. You can say, let's go watch a movie, and that's okay. You can also say, let's go see a movie, and that is also okay for you to use. Now, if you're talking about a past tense, that's when it starts to get a little bit complicated in between using see and watch, okay? Because you would have to use the past tense of watched. We, you could say we watched a movie and it sounds okay. Now, you could say you guys saw a movie but it sounds a little bit off and you have to give a little bit more explanation or it has to be a little, a little bit different in how you format it. So I would say the correct way of saying it would be to watch because, because you don't need to do anything besides opening your eyes to be able to see. Everything that you do, right? Gracias a Dios, tenemos la vista. Everything that you do with your eyes, the minute you open them is to see, right? So you could say, I went to the park and I was sitting down 
well, even then it makes it a little bit hard. Um, let's go see the monkeys at the zoo. Let's go see the monkeys. That's something that you can say. Let's go see the monkeys because you are going to a place and at that place, the monkeys are there and all you have to do is take your eyes and you will be able to see them, right? But now you can also say we are monkey watching or we are going to, you know, watch birds. That is also something that you can, that you guys will hear. Um, once again, the proper way of saying watching a movie or going to the theater would be, let's go watch a movie. That would be the most proper way of doing it. However, if you guys say, I am going to go see a movie, that is also acceptable. So you can, you can, you, it's actually, you know, I think somebody mentioned it the other day, it's, it's a matter of personal preference. How would you like to say it? Pero también tienen que tener mucho cuidado porque hay personas que, you know, they, they you know, there, there's people out there that will try to get you. Um, let me, let me give you the example of, of, of a word that works in either way. However, there are people that can, you know, that can start to mess with you. Have you guys ever been to a place and you ask somebody to go to the bathroom? Huh? For example, if we were if we were in a class and you guys were, were to ask me to go to the bathroom, usually we go like this. We say, can I go to the bathroom? Uh -huh. Teacher, can I go to the bathroom? Now, is that a correct way of saying it? Is that a correct way of saying it? Mm -hmm. yes and no and some teachers will get really witty with it there Rest. we go there we go so the reason is that you're using the word can and so physically can you physically go to the bathroom well i don't know because are, are you sick is there something wrong with you so I wouldn't be able to answer this unless I was your doctor. And so some teachers will tell you, well, I don't know, can you? Right? And then, so you tell them, well, teach, what's up, man? Por qué me está trolleando? And then they will, usually the teachers will explain and they will say, well, the correct way is for you to say, may I go? Because may is asking for permission. Is directly tied with. However, if you say, can I go to the bathroom? It's not completely wrong unless you really want to push, you know, uh, for, for, for grammar, uh, excellent and perfect grammar. So you can say, can I go to the bathroom? Or you can say, may I go to the bathroom? And it's, it's, it's okay. However, you know, some people will kind of just, you know, kind of keep pushing for that so same thing works for watching a movie or seeing a movie come to my house let's see what's on tv that is also something that you can use as opposed to saying let's see a movie come to my house and let's see a movie because that one sounds kind of off and some people might tell you what right so just be careful with how you use it the correct way, however, Guille, what did we say it was? Yeah, we can say, let's go see a movie, but if we want to talk about the past, we, we, we need to use watch. You can look at it sounds better when you do it like that. We watched yes. a movie. It's very specific to you going somewhere, sitting down and actually watching a movie. So yes. It's better. It's yeah, better. it's better. Wait, wait. So let's say I let's say I told you uh, yesterday. Um, yesterday we saw a movie. Now, that could imply that I have the DVD box or la cajita, mm -hmm. right? Y que we just saw the box. It doesn't necessarily mean that we went to the movie theater. And that we are, we actually saw it. 
So that mm-hmm. way, if you want to say that you saw a movie that you, you know, that you were actually able to watch it, then you, you want to use watched. That would be the better way to go. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So enough of Halle Berry. We go on to the next one. Present participles and past participles as adjectives is what we're going to see on this one. Here's the video. Oh, my goodness. No volume day today. Everybody's on mute. Welcome. This time you will learn about participles used as adjectives in present and in past. Please take notes and feel free to play the audio program as well as the explanation as many times as you need to. Page 87. Exercise 3. Grammar focus. Participles as adjectives. Present participles. Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. Past participles. I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. Before we begin, I want to go over to what exactly is the past participle. The past participle is the form of a verb typically ending in ed in English that is used in forming perfect and passive tenses and sometimes as an adjective. In this section, we'll study participles as adjectives. Pay attention. I want to go over two important points. Number one, do you remember what an adjective is? Very good. An adjective describes a noun. For example, the white cat ran away from John. Adjective, white, noun, cat. In other words, because participles can be used as adjectives, it means that the participle as adjective also describes a noun. For example, the white cat was exciting to watch. Noun, cat, participle as adjective, exciting. Number two, I imagine you noticed we use present and past participles during the audio program. Let's work around that. When we use present participle, we add ing. And when we use past participle, we add ed. Notice what happens here. We took the verb excite and we turn it into present participle, becoming exciting. The same verb, but this time into past participle and it became excited. I know you're wondering when to use participles in present or past. Here you go. Present participles describe a noun and past participles describe feeling of a noun. I'll try to simplify it. ing equals outside factor that causes a feeling. ed equals expresses the feeling or reaction. With examples, I am sure you will understand it better. Here, I am just showing you the present and past participle. Interesting, interested. Tiring, tired, exciting, excited. Now we'll use them in sentences. The museum is interesting. I'm interested. Work is tiring. I am tired. The movie is exciting. I'm excited. Please complete the description below with the correct form of these words. As always, write your answers in our discussion box. Okay, going back for a little review. 
start off with present participles and past participles. Okay. As you guys can see, also, there is a different in placement. Where does the present participle lay? Where does it sit in that sentence? And as you guys can see, the present participles usually are the last portion of that particular sentence. Stephen King's books are fascinating, fascinating. Past participles change. They go from the front of the sentence, or I'm sorry, for the ending of the sentence, and they move towards the beginning. And as you guys can see, it usually requires something else for a little help. I am fascinated. I was bored. And of course, I am interested. And we go back to what the video explains. The ING versus the ED, right? The ING, the feeling, and then the ED is what's actually happening. You are fascinated. You know, this is fascinating. It's causing something in you, right? And what already happened, which is I am fascinated by this. Okay. So then the explanations of the ING. Now, you can pretty much turn any word into either adding an ING or an ED. And there are specific rules for that as well, right? You can take, depending on what word it is, you can either turn it into a participle by adding the ing or uh, should i say present participle by adding the ing or you can turn it into a past participle by adding the ed oh because not all not all of the words that you guys will see you guys can add the ed some words only require the d to be added as well so, you know, heads up for that one. Moving forward on the video. And let me see, I think these are, all right. What is an adjective? We saw that. Let me go back here. Okay. If you wanna talk about the present, all you have to do is add an ing. For example, eat, right? You can add ing to eat, and now you are doing or you are eating, which means that at this particular moment, I am eating. Now, same word, eat, oh, can I add the ED to eat for a past participle? No, because it is uh, irregular verb. Well, right, and then so you have to you have to look at those when you guys are thinking about what am I going to say or how do I want to say it, and so that one would actually have to change completely. Right, if you wanted to talk about the past, I ate. I ate my lunch, right? And so I, I, I ate a sandwich. So it changes into what you what what you want to sound it out as. So just be careful with that. And if you're not too sure, try to sound it out. You know, say the word and then add the ing and see how that sounds. And if it doesn't sound right to you, 
more than likely is not going to sound right to everybody else. So, ojo con eso. Okay. This is the example of adding, of, of adding the ing to a word like excite or the ed to ex and, and making it excited. Okay. Talking about the feelings. Whenever you guys discuss the ing or you want to add the ing, look at it as what am I causing or what is the reason, right? What's happening here? Feelings, reactions with an ed. And let me see. There it is. Oh my God! Did I? Did I? I'm sorry about that, Paco. I only read it to. You. I only send it to you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. There you go. Hey y'all. Sorry about that. Okay. So here we have some of the words, right? Interest. We turn into interesting. Tiring exciting and these can be turned also into interested tired or excited by adding the ed and these are the examples of using ing versus using ed present and past participles what is it that you want to say okay I went to the museum. The museum is interesting, right? Or you could say, I am interested in going to the museum. There's a new exhibit. Work is tiring. I am tired of work. The movie's exciting. I am excited to go watch the movie. So these continue on the examples. And then we come to the exercise. There you go. And they gave us some words. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really blank by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier, sorry about the spelling, a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little blank then then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was blank. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was blank. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too blank. I liked the special effects though. They were blank. All right. What can we use for the first person? I was really blank by the price. Amaze, annoy, confuse, disgust, embarrass, shock. But now we know we're not we're not gonna use these, right? Ivan, okay, I was really shocked by the price. All right, so that means that we're using shock and we're using shocked. There we go, shocked. Okay. Mm -hmm. By mistake, I gave the cashier a five dollar bill instead of a ten. I was a little blank. What do you guys think? Yes. So we're using embarrassed and that would be embarrassed. Oh. Okay. Embarrassed. Did I get it? Yeah. Embarrassed. Okay. Then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was the mess was disgusted. disgusted. No, I don't think we could use disgusted. There we go. Disgusting. Yeah. 
disgusting. There we go. The people behind me talk during the movie, which was? Annoying. Annoying, yeah. There it is. Annoying. That is right. You, Yeah, disgusted. You wouldn't be able to use it here. Disgusted. Okay, we have annoying. And then now we are, the story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too. Confusing. There we go. Confusing. You could say I was confused by the plot of the movie, but in this particular case, you would have to use it was confusion. I'm sorry, it was confusing. The thrillers too confusing. I liked the special effects though. They were amazing. Amazing. There we go. Amazing, amazing. And there it is, guys. That's it. If you guys have time, you guys can fill out the bottom in the discussion section. I always recommend it. And then the knowledge check, right? Something similar to what we had to do. Ojo con esta. If you guys have any question, please let me know or let the group know. All right, everybody. That's it. Time flies when you have a good time. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for joining me today. Please forgive all the bad stuff and remember only the good stuff. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Okay. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.